Welcome to Liberty Ministries International, a ministry that is dedicated to your personal development and spiritual growth. Here, we equip you with tools and resources that will facilitate your transformation into what God has ordained you to be. And now, Reverend Lara brings you today's inspirational message. So as I was saying that, you know, I was meditating on the word God released to us last week, you know, and it's been blessing my heart. It really has been blessing my heart. It has given me more hope. It's caused me to be more confident than ever before. And I'm really assured of my inheritance in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. He sealed our faith. But today, I want to speak to you from the subject standing on his promises standing on his promises i am standing on the promises of god hallelujah we are standing on the promises of god as our platform we are standing on the promises of god as our rock yes we are standing on the promises of god that can never change that can never ever ever change and that can never ever ever fail we are standing on the promises of God. And I want to speak to you from Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 24. And the word of God reads, The Lord Almighty has sworn, Surely as I have planned, so it will be. And as I have proposed, so it will stand. This is the word of God to you today. It's coming very strongly prophetically to you that the lord says surely the lord almighty has sworn he has sworn surely as i have planned that is one word that you need to hold on to as i have planned so it will be and as i have proposed so it will stand you see as christians we live by the promises of god we live on the promises of God and we live by the promises of God because we know that his promises are so sure and they are so secure. We know that his promises will never fail. He is not a man that you should lie, nor the son of man that you should change his mind. We live in a broken world, okay? Wherever you live across the world, the, the society there is broken. It is broken. Things that are happening today, you will, you will never have thought 10 years ago that they would happen and things are really really terrible some things are terrible but we stand in this wicked world we can stand on the promises of god that is sure and that is secure and we know that our our lot the lot that belongs to us is not the lot that belongs to the world hallelujah so we live by these promises of god we stand on his promises god and god has proven himself to be a god of faithfulness he has promised himself over and over and over again that he is a God of faithfulness. He is faithful to do what he has said that he will do. He is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should change his mind. Whatever he says, that he will do. Hallelujah. And every word that comes out of his mouth will never go unfulfilled. He is watching over his word to fulfill them. Hallelujah. So he is a God of faithfulness. He is a God of faithfulness. He has proven himself to be faithful. When you look at the meaning of the word faithful, to be faithful means to be steadfast. To be steadfast in affection or allegiance. It's like God has sworn an allegiance towards you. And he is steadfast in that allegiance. So to be faithful means to be steadfast in, in affection. And we can all attest to this fact that God possesses all of these qualities. He is steadfast in his affection towards us. His steadfast love never ceases. They never come to an end. They never end. They are new every morning. So God has proven it to us and he continues to prove himself to us over and over again that he is committed. He is steadfast in his affection towards us. He adheres to his promises to us. He never goes back on his word. And the Bible tells us in Psalm 89, verse 34, he says, this is what God says in Psalm 89, verse 34. He says, 
my covenant I will not break, nor alter the word that has gone out of my lips. If you were unsure about, about his promises before, just meditate on this scripture. Psalm 89 verse 34, he says, my covenant I will not break nor alter the word that has gone out of my lips. He's not going to alter it. So alter means to change its form. It's like when you have an outfit, for example, and that outfit is too big and you want to alter it, you want to reduce it, you will take it to the tailor and the tailor will alter it for you. Or if, if it's too long, you will take it to the tailor and the tailor will alter it to you and shorten it. Whatever alteration you want in that outfit, the, the tailor will, by the time the tailor finishes with it, it will look different, okay? It will look different from how it used to be before you gave it to him. But God is saying that his word to you, his covenant to you, he will not break. And the word that has gone out of his mouth, he will never alter. He will never change it. There's not going to be any alteration to it. Whatever he says to you, that is exactly what he is going to do. Hallelujah. That is exactly what he is going to do. So that should fill you with confidence. That should fill you with joy. That God is committed to his promises to you. That God is committed to his word to you. That as you sit down to read your Bible, every word that you read from your Bible, God is committed to it. He says that he will not break his covenant with you. And he will not alter the words that has gone that that have gone out of his mouth hallelujah he will not change it okay so that should excite you right there and as i said last week we talked about the fact that god sealed our faith right from the beginning because he chose us from before the foundation of the world and he chose us to be holy and righteous okay he chose us to be holy and righteous before him so it does not matter what people are seeing it does not matter what other people are seeing concerning you it does not matter what if if they choose to capitalize on your weaknesses for example hallelujah what as far as god is concerned when he sees you he sees you through the blood of jesus christ which was also shed before the foundation of the world. So, so that covenant that was made before the foundation of the world through the blood of Jesus, he is not going to break it. Okay, he is committed to it. He is not going to break it. So today we are just going to remind ourselves of all the beautiful promises God has made for us. I want you to remind yourself of all the beautiful promises that God has made for you, uh, God has made to you. Maybe through a um, word of prophecy, maybe through um, when you are doing your quiet time, you're sitting down with God and you're reading your Bible and the Holy Spirit is ministering to you in your, in your spirit, you know, in whatever way you know that God has spoken to you, okay? I want you to begin to meditate on those, those promises right now and remember what he says that he will not break his covenant and he will not alter those promises that has gone out of his lips. Hallelujah. If you can conceive it in your mind, if you can conceive it in your spirit, it, it has come out of the lips of God. And he is telling you that he is not going to change it. He is telling you that he's not going to alter it. Okay? So I don't want you to, to listen to anything that is contrary to what the Lord has said to you. I don't want you to listen to a negative opinion. I don't want you to listen to what the enemy may be saying to you. Even I don't want you to listen to the current circumstances contrary or that are not in alignment with the promises of God. I want you to focus on those promises because at the right time, at the appointed time, those promises will begin to come to pass. Hallelujah. Whatever the Lord has spoken to you, I don't know what he's spoken to you in this season. I don't know what he has said to you that it has not yet come to pass. You can trust in his faithfulness. You can trust in the faithfulness of God. He is a God of faithfulness. He is without injustice. He is good and he is upright. Hallelujah. So in our main text today, Isaiah chapter 14, verse 24, it says, the Lord Almighty has sworn, surely as I have planned, surely as I have planned, so it will be. And as I have proposed, so it will stand. There are three key words 
in that scripture that I want you to pay attention to that. I want, to, uh, I want us to explore together today. Three key words. The first word is planned. Surely as I have planned. That's what he said. He said, surely as I have planned. So this makes me to understand that God has plans for me. God has plans for you. So, so he planned you. You are not here in the earth aimlessly. You are not here in the earth without, a, 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 without any purpose. You are not here by accident. You are not here without a purpose. You are not here on your own either. And you are not here of your own accord. Okay? You are not here of your own accord. You are not alone. God is with you. You are not here here without uh, without the presence of god hallelujah he hasn't left you alone he says i will never leave you nor forsake you he planned you he planned your life you know it's like i i think about when 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 um the government are trying to plan a city okay so it involves a lot of work it involves a lot of um um, architect, architectural work. The architects will design and uh, the, the city and will have even before the the city is is built at all. You know there is a plan that they are looking at. If you want to build a house, for example, you go to an architect and he designs the house for you. So even the you haven't even dug the foundation of that house, but you are looking at the plan. You see the finished work. Okay, you see the finished product the end product how you want that house to be and god says that he has planned as he has planned the lord has planned your life don't don't allow any any negative thing that may have happened in your life or that may be currently happening in your life to dis to distract you or to 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 confuse you you are you are here on purpose by divine purpose of god okay you are not here by accident you are not here of your own accord too you are not here for yourself by yourself you are here by the will of god god planned you okay god planned you because sometimes when we when we are not aware of this we allow the enemy to 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 um toss us back and forth like this we allow him to 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 play games with our lives not understanding that the enemy has no real power over our lives god planned us god planned my life he planned me i was thoroughly thought through in the mind of god you were thoroughly thought through in the mind of god he carefully planned everything about you meticulously planned everything about you he is intentional about your existence oh my goodness god is intentional about your existence god is intentional about your success god is intentional about your prosperity god is intentional about your peace he is intentional about your health he is intentional about your safety about your comfort god is intentional about your peace about your joy and about the fulfillment of your destiny he has carefully planned all this carefully planned all this hallelujah he has carefully planned all this in the book of jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 that popular scripture that we just quote that scripture because because it's you know maybe some of us who who um have been to sunday school it was part of our memory verses you know do you remember back in the days i don't know if they do that anymore when we go to um, bible uh, uh sunday school and we have memory verses for every week jeremiah 29 11 was one of them for i know the plans i have for you declares the lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope and the future plans 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 if you ask um business uh, uh business um people strategists for example they have plans for for any project that they they are embarking on you don't go into into any project and you don't have a plan 
You don't have a plan of action. And for us in this ministry, something big is coming. I know I keep teasing you. Some of you are already aware of it. But towards the end of this year, something, something big and something beautiful is about to happen. And we have a plan. And we are working towards the plan. So you don't do something without planning it. In the same way, God did not, did not create you without a plan. Do you, do you understand what I'm trying to say? He did not create you without a plan. And that word plan is defined in Hebrew as to determine, to consider. It means to consider, to determine this is what we're going to do. This is what is going to happen. So this has been considered, carefully thought through. So it means to determine. You see, God planned you. You were a thought in his mind before, before you, even before you became a fetus in your mother's womb. Okay, you were already a finished product in his mind. Okay, you were you were a thought in his mind before the ultrasound machine was able to detect whether you were a boy or a girl. You were already a thought in God's mind. God thought you through. He planned you regardless of who did not plan you. There is no such thing as an unplanned child. The parents may not have planned that child, but God planned that child. God planned that child. The parents may not have planned you. They may you may have come as a surprise. Some 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 some. I have I have a, um, a couple of friends whose whose parents thought that you know they had finished having children. You know, and in 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 later later in years, uh, uh, this you know the the their mother just felt pregnant with them. Okay, they weren't planned. They were not planned. But that does not mean that God did not plan them. Because this 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 couple of friends of mine, so one of them is a is a pastor actually doing great things for God. Okay, doing great things for God across Europe and Africa, and this is somebody that his parents did not plan him. They weren't planning. In fact, in, in his own testimony, he said that they considered aborting him before, you know, the doctor advised them otherwise. Look at him today, doing, doing great feats for God, doing exploits for God, okay? That's because God planned him. God planned him. Hallelujah. Uh, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter who rejects you or who accepts you. I want you to understand that God planned you. You are here on purpose for God's divine purpose. David captured this beautifully in, in the book of Psalm, Psalm 139, verses 13 to 17. You know, I, it, it, this is one of my favorite scriptures. Like I, I said, I always have, um, I have very many favorite scriptures, depending on what circumstance I am dealing with in the moment. But David captured this thought of mine properly in Psalm 139, verses 13 to 17. Let me read it to you. He says of God in this scripture, he said, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that fully well. My frame, listen to this. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. Your eyes saw my unformed body. When the body was not even formed yet, he's saying that the eyes of God saw it, okay? And it says, all the days ordained for me were written in your book because before one of them came to be. How precious are your thoughts, O oh God? How vast is the sum of them? Honestly, when I when I read this scripture, I, it, it gives me, it, 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 it helps me to, to understand who I am in Christ even more, okay? Because he, he's saying before my, my substance, my body, before it was even formed, before, before my... My, my, my body was, they say, your eyes saw my unformed body. I wasn't even formed properly. I wasn't even put together. The hands were not there yet, and you couldn't 
you you couldn't identify which ones were the legs you know the body was not formed but god saw everything why did he saw why did he see everything because he planned it he planned me he planned you he saw everything he saw all the days that you will live on this earth. he saw all of those days from the beginning before the creation of the world hallelujah this is why you cannot worry too much about who accepts you or who rejects you or who believes in you or who doesn't believe in you because god does god does he believes in you he believes in in you because you are his own careful plan and you are his own careful thought that is how special you are to him that is how important you are to god and it, because you are important to God, that is all that matters, okay? Everybody else will eventually fall in line. You know, he he, he he carefully planned you. He carefully thought you through in his mind. So so that is the first, uh, the first thought I want to present to you for your consideration today that he planned you. Because he said, surely as I have planned... And that is where you want your focus to be, as God has planned. God, I, I prefer your plans for my life. You hold on to that promises. You hold on to the word. You say, you say I prefer your plan. I'm standing on your plans. I am expectant of your, on, of your plans for me. Because you said, surely as I have planned. So that is the first promise. I mean, that is the first word that I'm submitting for your consideration today. The second word I'm submitting for your consideration today is purposed, to, to purpose something, okay? So because he said, and as I have purposed, so it will stand. As I have purposed, as I have purposed. So this word purpose here is similar to the first word planned because purpose to purpose means something. This is not, not purpose in... in um, in um what you call, call it it's purpose in verb to purpose something to intend something okay it, 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 it because purpose it means intent that is to intend for something to happen your intention okay so intent you purpose for something to happen okay it, it means to determine to have an intention or a goal in mind about something you have an intention or a goal in mind about something. So God had when when before He created you, you were in thought. You were so when you were still a thought in His mind, a concept in His mind. Okay, He had He had a purpose for your life. He intended for something for 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 how you are going to live your life. Okay, for things that will happen to you. There is an intentionality about you. Okay, there is an intentionality about you, a specific purpose for you to fulfill here on earth. Like I said, you are not here aimlessly. There is an intentionality about you. You are valid, you are valuable, you are important. You are valid, you are valuable, you are important. I want you to remember that. You are valid, you are valuable, you are important, you are relevant. There is an intentionality about you. You have a lot to offer your world. You have a, a lot to offer your sphere of influence. You are a world changer. You are a history maker. You are here for such a time as this. Hallelujah. You are here for such a time as this. God brought you to where you are intentionally. Okay? You could have been born in 1706, for example, you have you, you you could have been born you know um centuries ago but god god brought you to this to this generation intentionally for such a time as this there is there is an intentionality about you you are relevant to your generation you are relevant to your sphere of influence okay it's not like it's not like god waited until you were created before he began to to think about what he was going to get you to do no he planned you carefully he planned you carefully he thought through everything okay god was meticulous about you 
because because um the bible tells us in in ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 it says for we are god's handiwork another scripture says that for we are god's workmanship another 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 um um version says that we are god's masterpiece created in christ jesus to do good works which god prepared in advance for us to do hallelujah you are god's masterpiece you are god's workmanship okay you are god's handiwork that was created in christ jesus okay to do good works you were created to do good works which god prepared in advance for you to do there are some things that god had prepared in advance for you to do okay your purpose was was determined in advance for you to do hallelujah so god intended for you to be to happen god intended for you to happen and girl you are going to happen in your generation you are going to happen in your in your in your sphere of influence you are going to happen hallelujah to happen means to be to 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 make impact okay to be effective to make impact they are going to feel your effect they are they people around you will feel the effect of your existence around them in whatever way god has determined that for you because it's going to be different for different people some of you you are caterers okay i don't care how many caterers are there in the in in, in the world your own catering is unique and the people around you are going to feel the impact they are going to feel the effects of your un uniqueness okay some of you are writers some of you are singers some of you uh you know in, you have your own creative gifts that god has given you wherever it is you will make history you will you will make a a a a, 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 a an impact an indelible impact in your sphere of influence you are a history maker you are a world changer hallelujah you are a world changer. this 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 uh, studio is distracting me today because it's just doing a uh, slow it's just going into this slow motion thing i don't know why it is but please ignore it okay <laughs> you are a world changer i want you to affirm yourself that i am a world changer I am a world changer. I will change. I will make a change in my world, in my sphere of influence. Okay. I am a history maker. Okay. Nobody has your voice print. Nobody has your fingerprints. Okay. Only you have those. Only you have your own voice print. Only you have your own fingerprint. Only you can do what you do the way you do it. Nobody can be like you. Nobody can be you. Hallelujah. Nobody can be you. You are, you are uniquely unique. Okay, God created you intentionally. He created you on purpose for his own divine purpose for your life. Hallelujah. So I want you to get happy about that. I want you to get excited about that. That you are you are you are an instrument in God's hands. Okay. You are you are here to fulfill the divine purpose that God has prepared in advance for you to do. You are God's workmanship, designers original. There is no one like you. No one will ever be like you. When God created you, he broke the mold. Amen. Nobody has your, your, your unique personality. There may be similar people, but that's as far as they go. Similarity. Nobody can be exactly you. Nobody can be exactly you. So you see, God intended for you to happen. He intended for your life to prosper. His intention towards you are good. Remember, we talked about Jeremiah 29, 11. His intention towards you are good, okay? He planned you, and then he proposed for you to happen. And he says that, as I have proposed, so it will stand, okay? And notice the tense of the word, that it is in the past tense, not in the present continuous. He did not say that, what I will propose, but he said, what I have proposed. Okay. So it's not like he's waiting and thinking about, okay, so we've got through last week. What are we going to do this week? No. He said, what I have proposed. Yeah. That he has proposed your life. Okay. So, so that, that is to tell you that his purposes for your life 
are predetermined and cannot be changed. I know that this may sound like I'm repeating myself to you, but but there is there is a reason why God is repeating this to us, okay? And it is for emphasis because life comes to challenge us. Circumstances will come to challenge us or to ch to challenge the word of God in our lives. But we need to remember that that our purposes have been predetermined because it says that as I have proposed. As I have proposed, he has proposed, okay? He has proposed it and it is not going to change. Hallelujah. For the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 8, verses 29 and 30, it says, for those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified, and those he justified, he also glorified. Hallelujah. Tell yourself, I am one of those. I am one of those. I am one of those God for new, and I am one of those he predestined. Hallelujah. I am one of those he predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. I am one of those. I am one of those that he predestined that he also called. I am one of those he has called. I don't care whoever says that you cannot be called because you are a woman. The devil is a liar. The Bible says that he predestined me and he called me. I am one of those. He called me and he justified me. I am one of those that he justified. So those whom he justified, he also glorified. I am one of those that he has glorified. His glory is upon me. His glory is upon me. Hallelujah. He has released his glory upon my life. I carry the glory of God. You need to remind yourself because there are too many negative voices in the world. You have to remind yourself that I am one of those he glorified. I carry the glory of God. I carry the of God. I carry the power of God, the presence of God. I am one of those he predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He foreknew me. You have to remind yourself, you are one of those whom he foreknew. You are one of those whom he predestined. You are one of those whom the Lord has called. Those whom he has justified and those whom he has glorified. And you must walk accordingly, okay? Never walk with your head, uh, head bowed down. You must walk with confidence that he foreknew you, he predestined you, he called you, he justified you, and he glorified you. Hallelujah, okay? So the verb proposed has, has almost the same meaning as the first word, planned, okay? And when God is repeating himself like this, it is because he is emphasizing his word. It is for emphasis sake. That, that word, that promise. And when God places an emphasis on a word or a promise like that, you will do well to pay attention to it. You will do well to pay attention to it. Pay attention to it. Pay attention to the fact that he, he planned you. Pay attention to the fact that he proposed you. He proposed you. There is a purpose to your life. He, he, he proposed you, okay? Because he said that as I have proposed, not as I will propose, but as I have proposed, so it will stand. Which brings me to the third, to the third word, stand. Remember, we're looking at planned, purpose, and stand, okay? Brings me to the, to the word stand, okay? Because he said that what is going to happen that let us not get it twisted. What is going to happen is what I have proposed, okay? Because all power is in his hand. Can you think of a power that can withstand the power of God? Can you think of an authority that can challenge the authority of God? Can you think of a plan that can trump the plans of God? No, I can't. I can't because there isn't any. There isn't any decision that can, that can overthrow the decision of God, that can veto the decisions of God. Okay, he says that as I have planned, as I have proposed, so it will stand. That is what's going to stand. What I have proposed is what is going to stand. Okay, so the word stand in Hebrew is, is kum, Q-U-M. It's kum in Hebrew. And it is defined as to rise. 
to to establish to confirm to erect to restore hallelujah and it is said in the context of covenant It is said in the context of covenant. So we've gone into that slow, slow motion again. Let's try. Let, let me see if, if I can I can repeat this. Okay. So the word stand in this in this scripture. Oh my goodness. It's Q U M in Hebrew. Kum. And it is defined when when you look at the definition of that word in a Hebrew Hebrew dictionary, it is defined as to rise, to establish, to confirm, to erect, to restore, and and in this in this particular scripture, it is said in the context of a covenant. So, in other words, God is saying to you and I today that His plans and purposes for for you shall be established it is to be established okay even though it may be tested and tried by various afflictions and trials it may be tested by betrayals of men or by disappointment of men or or any form of adversity that we, we may have gone through uh, but it will stand it will be established his counsel alone will be established we have to we have to settle on that because god is not going to change his mind remember he said that i will not alter the words that has that have gone out of my lips he's not going to alter it he he's a covenant keeping god okay so he said as i have proposed what he has proposed for your life is what is going to be established it is what is going to he's going that he has erected it and there is going to be a restoration because it says it is to restore whatever it is that the enemy may have stolen hallelujah from your life up until now there will be a restoration in the name of jesus christ there will be a restoration there will be a restoration. It, it, is, it, is, it also means to confirm. It also means to confirm that his plans for your life are confirmed. His purposes for your life are confirmed. As it is in heaven, so it will be here on earth. Hallelujah. It, 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 as it is in heaven, so it will also be here on earth. Everything that he has planned for you. Okay, every every plan, every purposes of God for your life. Every he said, as I have proposed, so it shall stand. So that is what that word that word means. His purposes and plans for you shall stand, shall be established. I don't want you to be discouraged. You may have come, up, you may have lived through uh, uh, some adversity or some contrary um, circumstances in life, but I want you to know that after all said and done, in the final analysis. The purposes of God for your life shall be established. Shall be established. Okay? His purposes, they shall stand the test of time. They shall stand, they shall stand your days of foolish decisions. They shall endure your days of misadventure. We have all had misadventures in our lives. Okay? But no matter what may come your way, the plans and the purposes of God for you shall be established because he said as i have proposed so shall it stand hallelujah he tells us as i begin to round up now he tells us again isaiah chapter 43 verse 13 he says yes and from ancient of days i am he no one can deliver out of my hand when i act who can reverse it when i act who can reverse it who can, and of course, that's a, we know that's a rhetoric question. When God acts, who can reverse? Who has the power to reverse the, the actions of God? There is no power in heaven or on earth or even under the earth. Nowhere at all. Because God is the all-powerful. Hallelujah. He is the all-powerful. He said that when I act, who can reverse it? There is no one. There is no created being. That is capable of doing that. No created being that is capable of reversing 
the works of God. And the Lord is telling you and I today that his plans and purposes for us shall be established. You need to believe that. You need to hold on to that. Many times we focus too much on the contrary things that are happening to us more than we should focus on what the Lord is saying to us. But like I said, I've brought to our remembrance today that God is faithful. He's a God of faithfulness. He's faithful to his word. He's a covenant keeping God. And his words, his promises, his prophecies, they carry more weight than the contrary events that are happening to us are happening around us. Hallelujah. And to give us even more assurance, in case you are still not sure, in case you are still wondering, you're still looking at, with everything that is happening around me, is this thing really true? Let me read to you Isaiah chapter 55, what the Lord says in Isaiah chapter 55, verses 10 to 11. This is the word of the Lord to you. He says, as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So is my word that goes out of my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Hallelujah. The word of God will not return to him empty. It will not return to him void. It will not return to him unaccomplished. But it will accomplish what the Lord desires. It will not accomplish what your enemies desire. It will not accomplish what your haters are desiring. It will not accomplish what those who are envious of you are desiring. But he says that it will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Hallelujah. Get happy. Get happy. Get excited that the Lord will not allow his word to fall on the ground without it accomplishing the purpose for which he sent it. He has sent his word into your life. The word of the Lord will not return empty. God is a God of faithfulness. He is steadfast in his faithfulness. Hallelujah. I don't know what you are waiting on the Lord for today. You may have been saying that, that, uh, it, this should have happened or that should have happened or the other should have happened. I don't want you to despair. God is at work. He is at work in every situation. Hallelujah. His plans and his purposes shall be established in your life. Okay. And every door that is supposed to open for you will obey the voice of God in this season in the name of Jesus Christ. Every door that is ordained to open for you, I command them right now in the name of Jesus to obey the voice of Jehovah and begin to fling open for you in the name of Jesus Christ. And the Lord said in Jeremiah 1, 12, that he's watching over his words to perform it. I declare and I decree over you that there shall be a performance of every word. There shall be a performance, performance of every blessing. There shall be a performance of every prophecy in the name of Jesus Christ. Nothing will hinder it. Nothing, nothing will, will stop it in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare that every word that has proceeded out of the mouth of God to you, either through a prophet, either, either through um, reading your Bible, in whatever way, shape or form, the Lord has spoken to you because the, the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 1 that God speaks to us in diverse ways. I declare a performance. I declare that those words will come to pass at their appropriate time in the name of Jesus. And while you are waiting, you will not despair. You will not be despondent. You will not give up. You will not be tired. You will not be weary. You will not be discouraged in the name of Jesus Christ. You will wait on the Lord and he will renew your strength and you will soar on the wings of eagles. You will soar above your weaknesses. You will soar above your feelings in the name of Jesus Christ. You will soar above despair in the name of Jesus Christ. And God will cause your eyes to see the full manifestation of every promise in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you today. We thank you, oh Lord, because we will not give up. We will not give up. We will not give up under pressure. In the name of Jesus, we will not buckle under any trial. In Jesus' name, we declare that we prevail. We prevail over every adversity. In the name of Jesus Christ, we push back every hand of opposition. 
we push back every hand of resistance in the name of Jesus Christ. And we prevail. Lord, the Bible says that blessed is she who believes that there shall be a performance of the word. We are those who believe that there will be a performance of every word that you have spoken. We trust you, oh God. We thank you, Father God. Because there will be a fulfillment of every promise. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Glory to God in the highest. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my goodness. I trust that you are blessed today. There is a release. Let me tell you now. There is a release of grace upon this ministry and everyone that is connected to this ministry. I said there is a release of grace upon your life. Grace to do the impossible in the name of Jesus Christ. Grace to, 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 to accomplish things that have been difficult up until now. In the name of Jesus, release, re receive that grace now. In Jesus' mighty name, there is an outpouring of God's grace. There is an outpouring of his grace over your life. There is an outpouring of his grace over your efforts. The Lord will bless your efforts because the Bible says that he will bless the works of our hands. He will bless the work of your hands. In the name of Jesus, his plans and his purposes for you shall be established. This week, as you go into this week, the presence of God will go ahead of you to make every crooked path straight. You will not be defeated in the name of Jesus Christ. Your, your head will not hang down in shame. In Jesus' mighty name, the Lord will support you. The Lord will enable you by his spirit. The Lord will accomplish everything that he has said concerning you. His favor will surround you as with a shield this week. In the name of Jesus Christ, he will cover you. His Shekinah glory will cover you. In Jesus' mighty name, he will keep you from all harms. No evil will come near you. No calamity will come near your dwelling place. No weapon formed against you will prosper. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare and I decree that there shall be no divination against you. There shall be no enchantment against you. But it shall be said of you, child of God, come and see what the Lord is doing. Your mouth will be filled with testimonies. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. We appreciate you, Lord. Yes, Lord. I trust that you have been blessed by today's message. For more inspirational and life-transforming messages, head over to our Facebook page at Liberty Ministries International or our YouTube channel, also at Liberty Ministries International. While you are there, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share our videos so that more people can also be blessed. Join us next time for more life-transforming messages. Destiny awaits you.